Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Johnson Title Podcast, a partner of MoshPitNation.com. And uh, that was Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals Ignorant Point to kick things off for the episode. This week's guest is Joey Blue Gonzalez, the drummer for Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals. And with me, as always, is Daniel Terry. Dan, how are you doing? I am doing fan freaking tastic. How are you, John? I'm doing good. I uh, we got a, a slew of good interviews uh, coming up. Uh, we did a, a chat with Phil Labonte of All That Remains, which uh, was was a little little eh as far as the audio, uh, but we had to deal with that. And uh, but it was good. And then uh, I got to chat with a, an Australian uh, with Matt Young from King Parrot. And then we kept it in the house core family, and, and again talked to Joey from uh, Philip H and Selmo and the Illegals. So it's been a, a very grind couple of interviews the last little bit. Yeah, it worked out for me because I'm studying. I'm stu- yeah, getting ready for a uh, episode of Napalm Death on my other podcast. So it's just been grind, 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 grind for me this week. And that's what you've been doing in your day job. Yep, just grinding. Just grinding. And uh, yeah, I, I you know was really much looking forward to doing this. Uh, we're kind of doing some of these interviews with the uh, the King Parrot guys and with uh, Joey. Uh, in preparation for the Berserker Fest, uh, which is happening on September 28th, uh, it's going to be really fucking good. Brian Posehn, who I'm hoping to get on the podcast, still waiting to hear back uh, about that. But Brian Posehn's hosting great bands. Uh, Battlecross is on it. The Armed are on it. Uh, Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals are headlining. King Parrot's on it. Uh, my friends over in Childbiter on it. Sean and Jeff Tuttle from X Dillinger Escape Plan have a new grind project, uh, which will be debuting uh, basically, if you love everything hard, heavy, fast, loud, Berserker Fest is where you need to be. Uh, again, that's going to be on September 28th. Um, tickets are still available. Uh, but uh, yeah, this was a, this is a chat that I know Dan. Uh, interestingly enough, for those who listen to discography discussion and or know Dan in general, know that Dan's not really big on Pantera or many of the the Phil and Selmo things. So it was pretty pretty surprising when I told him that I was going to be talking to someone from the band, and he was like, "Oh boy." Yeah. But it turned out that I was uh, kind of wrong on that, you know. You enjoyed the I listened record. To the rec- <laughs> yeah, I listened to the record, and I was like, holy shit, this is a lot better than I thought it was going to be, you know. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, I kind of went into it thinking it was going to be like a down or a super only, or, or, you know, that it was going to sound like the first Illegals record, you know. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised that this shit was, like, literally right up in my wheelhouse. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, you know. So, I, I mean, I dug into the lyrics and everything and, and got all ready for the interview, and... uh you know, the interview, which we'll talk about a little bit more in the outro, but, uh, you know, definitely gave me a little bit more of a, a realistic perspective on, on Phil and on, you know, on, on what he's trying to do and, you know, where he's coming from. So, I mean, you know, that's just one of those growing opportunities where I kind of get to see things from a different perspective other than just what I have observed of the bands that Phil's been in over the years, you know, because, I mean, it's not like I knew anyone personally from those bands so I could only come to whatever conclusions that I could come to on my own. So it was kind of nice getting a, a personal uh, perspective on all that stuff. Yeah, and I think that was kind of the fun thing about this this interview leading up to it with the record sending, you know, having you listen to the record in preparation for this chat is it's just seeing you kind of come around where you're like, wow, I really enjoy this. Uh, I, You know, the album title speaks to me. We talked a little bit about that leading up to our interview. And just kind of, you know, Seeing you go from being somewhat known as a staunch anti Pantera, anti Phil, you know, fan to kind of being like, wow, I, I think maybe this is, you know, it'll be interesting to see if this is maybe the, the first thing that kind of dips your toes into where you're like, you know, what, I'm going to go back and listen to the other record a little bit more. And maybe I'm going to go check out Super Joint and kind of get more more into some of the other stuff and see if you kind of come out the other end more of a fan. Well, let's not go crazy, but, uh, you know, it's uh definitely an awkward moment for me whenever i'm reading through phil's lyrics on this illegals album and i'm like kind of agree with that kind of agree with that (laughs) you know and then after after we had the chat you know really getting into it and being like wow you know it really our perspective on on some things are are not really that different yeah and uh i you know i do wonder too and and we kind of talk about it in the actual chat but you know i had kind of wondered how much of the the lyrical content on this record was just a lot of what phil went through uh with the events from the dime bash uh thing from about a eh, little bit a year ago at this point yeah i mean little fucking heroes for sure 
you know uh, uh, yeah let's rip that in mind you know what i think uh instead of keep talking about a conversation that we we had and, and hinting about it how about we get into our conversation with joey blue gonzalez drummer for philip h and selmo and the illegals and we will talk to you guys afterwards <laughs> Just through looking... the ring or this one over here, bro. What was that? I said been going through the fucking ringer over here with me. Oh god, yeah. We got a what what happened? Uh man, I took off last night and uh everything was going good. Listening to my jams and whatever. And uh I was like there was traffic, so I was like, Alright, fuck it, cool. I'll pull over. Take the bus, go go an alternate route. Dude, I, I went the all I stopped. And my van just didn't want to start back up. Uh, and then uh, I had to come out and check out my drive. He said, yeah, it's the alternator, man. So I had to tow to a, a shop. I woke up this morning and called the shop and was ready to get it going. And the lady was like, oh, he took off for Labor Day. Oh, yeah. He's gone. So I would have been shit out of luck till Tuesday, dude. I'm in Wascom, Texas. I, I don't even remember passing this place. <laughs> you know, You're never going to forget it from here on out, though. No, fuck no. This place is a pimple on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well. Yeah. But, uh. <laughs> but, uh. They, oh, they, they supposedly got me hooked up, man. So I should be on the road here pretty soon. I had. I, dude, I had to. My, my, uh. My pre tour, normally when I go on tour, you know, I take care of all the bills at home and everything. And you sort of leave town with everything in a, in a spot to where you can leave it. Right. Dude, I fucking, I'm, I'm eating shit today, like 700 bucks in 12 hours. <laughs> Jesus, man. <laughs> that's that's, how, that's how I'm, And I'm not even, I don't even get to start tour for another four, four days. Three, four days so. <laughs> you don't even get a chance to start yeah. making anything back. Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck no. I'm, I'm, I'm F in the A. Uh, but it's all good, man. I slept in a cool bed. Uh, you know, it's a nice hotel. And now I'm going to go hang out in the lobby until they tell me my van is fixed. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it was funny. I was talking with uh, Matt from King Parrot yesterday, uh, doing a little bit of a Berserker Fest kind of pre coverage and so forth, and uh, the tour uh, coverage. But uh, yeah, it was funny because we were talking about how he's got a, what did he tell me? A 12 hour flight from. Australia to LA and I was like dude fuck that like I've been in a flight that goes from here in the Midwest in Michigan to just like the the West Coast at like four or five hours and that was enough baby shit and people you know I I don't know my wife and I always make the comment it's like why is it that like you know everyone knows that how to travel in theory and then you get them into a plane and then everything that you know any societal norms like hey you know don't burp or be loud or you know shit your pants or whatever and it's like it's just all those rules seemingly go out the window as soon as they're like okay and the uh we're we're (laughs) pressurizing the cabin and now all rules just don't apply and it's like where are all these garbage people coming from (laughs) people are just inconsiderate man they're they're dick heads <laughs> uh, you know i like to th- I, I like i like to throw a little uh, accent on there because it makes it sound a little bit more sophisticated they just say that people are dickheads that's dear tape. but you know yeah they're dick heads uh <laughs> no it, that's 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 basically uh uh how i feel man it's just you know you get out there and you expect people to be courteous uh to a point and then it's like dude who fucking learned you <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Were you raised in a barn? <laughs> but uh, it's all good, man. Uh, long flights, melatonin. Oh yeah, that's probably something I should look into. There you go. Yeah, Speak- melatonin or uh, hard drugs. Well. Okay. Uh, you know, hard drugs are a little bit harder to get onto a plane uh, unless you're going the edible route now with a. Uh... With the you know flying yeah. into like you know some of these Not extra if places. Not already in your system. That's true too. 
Speaking about yeah. already being in your system, the new uh, Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals record, uh, Choosing Mental Illness as a Virtue, uh, has been out for a little bit. Uh, we wanted to kind of talk about the record with you, and something, you know, Dan and I were talking about leading up to our chat with you was, you know, we were wondering if it was a surgery you had earlier uh, this year that kind of prevented the, the touring to, from starting right away, like you guys had to cancel that tour. And we were both kind of wondering, do you think that was a, a hindrance or a help maybe that maybe it's allowed the fans to get more time with the record? Uh, I think it's maybe a little bit of both. But uh, the first album, when it came out, it was very herky-jerky and very new. And I, I believe people had this sort of, a, you know, uh, idea of what maybe they thought the illegals were going to be. And maybe it didn't happen for a lot of people. But now that the illegals are established, and when this record came out, we've been advertising this record as a very extreme departure, uh, and and where we're going, uh, and it was received as such. You know, we already have our established fan base, so there wasn't nobody was expecting Pantera worship or nothing like that. So, I think uh, it was good a little bit. But uh, the the best part about that about postponing it was that you know Philip is a uh, you know old gray Mary, what he used to be. Uh, he needed his time to recover, man. He was really gung-ho about doing the tour and was really, really convinced that he would be able to do it. But then uh, he had a, uh, he, he fell, actually. He tripped, and, and it was just a, a complete minor setback. You know, it, it, it put him two weeks behind, three weeks behind, and, and then that was, that's all it took, you know. Uh, I'm glad we didn't do it just for the sake that he's, he's 110% now and uh, – and it's gonna be it's gonna be well worth the wait for sure. Uh, so we'll see. But I'm pretty sure everybody's excited to fucking see all this live, man. This, is, this album is a, is a complete monster. So yeah, it really is. It, it really blew me away because I I wasn't expecting it, and I guess that was kind of what my uh, I didn't, like. I didn't expect it to be Pantera. I didn't expect it to be Down. I didn't expect it to be Super. Jo- you know any of that stuff. Um, and it's what what really blew me away was just the the heavier focused on like more grind stuff. Uh, which I'm a huge fan of, and uh, it kind of blew me out of the water. And I'm, I'm, I guess I'm wondering, with the record being out a little for a little while now, you know, was the reaction really strong? Like, I mean, or was the reaction like really like people? Because I know everybody had said it's going to be way heavier, but I, I'm wondering yeah, if people yeah, yeah. were maybe surprised at the at the extremity that it you know that it went to, considering that you know most of Phil's other other uh, bands have have always been more of a a groove or, or, you know, stoner kind of sound. Uh, yeah, I, I, it's just, uh, it really took off. Uh, people just really went bananas for it and, and we're excited that we were going for it. So it, it definitely, it definitely has been received very well. Uh, but like I said, since it's so extreme, I think people are really, really excited to hear it live. You know, they want to see this monster in action and um, they're going to get it. <laughs> Uh, with that being said, too, about us, the thing that I that I focus in the most on the vocals is I've I've never really heard Phil sound like this. Um, you know, with that, uh, you know, like he, it, do you think that it may have set people aback a little bit? Like, oh, this is like a whole new level. Uh, I don't think it turned anybody away at all. I I think it really uh it it maybe maybe turned some people on, like anybody that really doubted what he was about. Or uh, or anything like that. Like, dude, this is this is it. We're music fans. We're music lovers, and we're here to make music. And and he wanted to write what he wanted to write. I mean, and when we wrote this illegals album, we actually wrote material that was so too heavy that we couldn't even use it for the illegals. So uh, it spawned <laughs> right. a lot of stuff. Album. We uh, we started. Uh, we actually started a, another band on top of it called Sub Metroton Unganga. Oh wow. Which is a, it, yeah, dude, it's insane. And it's basically illegals riffs that are too insane and too heavy to be illegals riffs, if you can imagine that. Yeah, it's kinda of hard to imagine considering where we're you know, where we're at now. You know, where where you guys are at now, you know, <laughs> like I uh Yeah. You know, and that that's one of the things too, you know, with it being so much heavier even than the first um than the first illegal or than the first illegals album, you know, uh I think that, uh, or I'm, I'm wondering, I guess, was this more of a collaborative project? Um, whereas, according, well, according to the press releases, Phil said he took 
on a lot of creative control on the first record. So was this one more of like a collaboration with everybody, just kind of sitting in a room and figuring out what you can come up with? Uh, well, it, it, sorry about that. Yeah. Notifications. Uh, for me, yeah, I, I really think so. Uh, this was uh, after we had the departure with Marzi. Uh, Philip had the first album. He had riffs. He had songs pretty much done, ready to go. And he needed different drum tracks on them, so uh, you know I played to that. But this album, as as the riffs were being written, everything was being written. I was making up drum parts along along the way, and there's a few bits and pieces here, and like uh, uh, like timing or number structure stuff like that. You know, I had uh, I had a little bit more input than I'm used to normally having, and. Uh, for the majority of the album, it was really uh, Philip, Stephen, and myself because, like I said, we he just got on this kick of extreme heavy shit, and just we just started recording everything, and and that's what we got to. We got to a point where we we're just recording everything, and we we're like, well, well, fuck, we'll sort it out later. And once we got Mikey, everything started falling into place. And then once we got Walt, it really solidified it that that Stephen could move over to guitar, and. Uh, it really opened up the creative process for everybody. So, so for me, yeah, I do feel like this was a, 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 a lot more of a collaboration uh, effort as opposed to just being just Philip going here, y'all fucking learn the Thurman. You know? <laughs> right. Right. Um, yeah. And I think, uh, so like for this tour with that being said, I mean, you guys seem so excited about, about the new material. Is that pretty much what we, what we can expect from the tour as far as it being, more focused just on the new material or are you guys going to be throwing out anything from the first record? We'll probably be throwing out stuff from the first album, man. We got to sell both records, man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I really think it, I think uh, sometimes, you know, bands come out, they put out an album, they either play the whole thing or they'll play snippets here like that. You know, uh, the illegals, we didn't have any new material back when we toured. So we, we played covers. We played the illegal set. And then we did like Super Joint and some Pantera songs, you know, medleys, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Might as well, uh, right? Yeah, for sure. And now that we have so much material, uh, I really, I really think it's going to be a really fun, high energy set because it's. A, I mean, we're, we, you know, we're a bunch of good looking, fun guys. Uh, All right. <laughs> uh, but it, hear, it's going it's to be, it's going to, it's going to be, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, single and ready to mingle. Right. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't have a girlfriend. I just know a girl who would get really mad if she heard me say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it, 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 uh, w- the set's going to have a lot of everything, and I'm, you know, spoiler alert, we're probably going to play a Pantera tune. Uh, we're getting ready to go to South America in the beginning of the year, so this tour is really setting us up to conquer the rest of the world. And uh, like I said, man, this material, it's so extreme and it's so heavy, but unlike the first album that was a bombardment of herky-jerky information, this one is almost like streamlined grindcore death metal. Right. So, and, and to me, what that means is it's as much information as we can shove into your head on top of a groove. That way it doesn't go over your fucking head. You can still enjoy it. So... I think that's what that that's what really has a lot of people excited is that normally people that would not be into black metal grindcore or super extreme music they're like whoa I do like blast beat yeah I do like this fucking right. crazy shit so it, it's really cool man uh, it, it, once people see it live and it goes and it starts to get around live I, I think I I, ha- I have a lot of uh, uh, this is my shit dude this is illegal's material this is my shit I love super Superjoin I love War Beast. I love all the projects I'm a part of. Uh, you know, they're a part of me. But this illegal's material is 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 me. This is going to be me finally solidifying myself as an extreme drummer. And you know, a lot of my friends are extreme drummers and you know, badass, fast motherfuckers. And and this is my chance to fucking you know join the battle, if you will. Right. Uh, so that that's where I'm at. So I'm gonna kind of ask a couple of questions um and kind of a little bit more on the serious subject side um 
So, you know, I already referenced that I was talking with Matt yesterday um, from King Parrot. And something, you know, in, in prepping for this conversation with the two of you guys, uh, you know, I was kind of looking for some parallels. So, you know, there's some continuity between some of the interviews. Um, but then as I, some of the questions I was coming up with, I kind of realized I needed to probably ask both of you. So it didn't seem like I was being unfair uh, as far as the approach. But something, you know, you just kind of mentioned, you know, that you guys are going to play a Pantera song on, on this upcoming tour. So something, you know, that I was thinking of for you specifically is, do you feel like being involved with a project with Phil, you in indirectly, regardless if it's intentional or not, are really a part of this Pantera umbrella just from the association of having Phil in your band? Like, do you find that just because of the association that like you have to kind of know Pantera stuff, whether you would have or not is irrelevant really, but just that you are a part of that lineage. Uh, man, absolutely. I was, uh, I was burping. Excuse me. Sorry about that. No, that's, fine. uh, I was, I was born and raised in, in, in Fort Worth. So, uh, Joe's garage is like right there where I grew up. I always drove by it, you know, and all my guys would always be like, yeah, dude, that's where, that's where everything went down. That's where everything happened. Uh, but, you know, being from that area, dude, that was like, Pantera is one of the first heavy, heavy bands I ever got into. Uh, I used to, you know, download the home videos. You need to wait weeks at a time to be able to watch, you know, three, four minute clips of, uh, of those home movies. And, just to be a part of it and to be jamming with Philip is, is just, in, you know, it's, in, it's incredible. For real. Uh, I mean, he's, he's one fan, you know, the world over and has millions of people that look up to him. So yeah, it's, it's uh, I definitely think about it, man. Uh, it, it's part of me, you know, that history that they had there in Fort Worth and all over Texas. It's, it's uh, you know, we're flying that flag, dude. Uh, we're still in it to win it, just like everybody else. It's it's, uh, it's really intense and it's really crazy to think about that. You know, I'm I'm jamming with this living legend, uh, and but he's been nothing but an awesome friend to me and helped me grow as a as an individual, as a musician. Uh, and dude, it's just it's just crazy. You know, when people bring it up and they ask me to think about it like that, it makes me think about it. And then I get nervous, <laughs> really nervous. No, I'm just kidding. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, dude, it's awesome, man. It's crazy, uh, to just be, to be able to wake up and say that, you know, that, uh, I'm, I'm able to jam with the dude. It's pretty badass, but that he respects my creative input and my playing and, and he loves what I do. So it's, he's a brother. It's he's like a brother dad. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes. That's weird. In the day and age of uh, sister like wives, doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you can't. You know, sister wives can't have it all. They're selfish. So. <laughs> so it's it's funny that a lot of those those same sentiments were echoed by Matt, uh, especially when I asked him the question. I'm I'm going to ask you, and and I I will also preface by saying if you don't want to answer this, just like I asked him, uh, you don't have to answer this. Um, but I listen to a lot of music based podcast as far as you know business side of things and so forth and and it creates a very interesting dynamic sometimes when i think about doing interviews and when i think about things from a fan's perspective as someone now kind of in the media and, and also just from a business perspective now that a lot of things that i don't think people may think about first thing and so i had pros this question to matt and i'm going to ask you as well Something that was interesting to me was in light of the the whole issue Phil had, uh, you know, a while ago, uh, that was very much publicized. The thing that intrigued me was thinking about that from a business perspective, and you know, obviously with him owning Housecore Records, having bands under the umbrella of Housecore Records. You know, I asked Matt, was he worried at any point of any backlash that he may face as a result of of being associated with Phil? And so, you know, taking it a step further with you, since you are directly in a directly related and in a band with him, was there ever any worry about, oh, fuck, this this thing that I've been building with this other person, a friend of mine, someone that means so much to me, it might be taken away because of something that didn't even involve me? Well, uh, 
you know, not a lot of people know this, but I was there that night. Okay. Uh, uh, me and Steven actually went up there as guests for Nam. Uh, for me, man, what made me the maddest out of that whole situation was that everybody that wanted to throw around this nasty word about one of my best friends, not one media outlet, decided to look at pictures of him jamming with Super Joint Ritual. Right. Kevin Bond is, is half black. Uh, and, you know, Jimmy Bowers, he's American, but he's pretty coon ass. So that's like kind of, you know, he's pretty much there. Right. And as for me, they, you know, I'm I'm full blooded Mexican, dude, and and not one. And Marzi at the time, you know, uh, uh, when he was in the band, you know, Marzi's a uh, not Polynesian Persian or whatever he likes to call himself. Uh, so we we have you know we have different backgrounds, and what maybe the maddest out of the entire ordeal is not one media outlet or publication decided to call me, decided to call Kevin. Decided to call anybody that actually worked with Philip. They fucking all got quotes from all these uh, uppity fucking dickheads that call Philip a friend and that just wanted to fucking make it seem like Philip owed something to the rest of the fucking world, dude. I mean, it, it just, it was just ridiculous, you know? I, I was I was behind him since day one, you know? I, I knew it was, uh, uh, when I saw it happen, I was just like, ah, you know, just kind of like, oh man, that was weird. That might bite us in the ass. But yeah. he's he's one of my best friends, dude. I'll go to bat for that motherfucker for anything, dude. And and again, you know, not one person, not one media outlet decided to call us, call his bandmates, and be like, how is he really? How does Philip really treat you guys? And yeah. it's like, well, I, I had a baby. Uh, he's helped me, you know, he's put me on the road. He's given me a job. He's given me a life, a career. I mean, he's helped me grow. And I'm, I'm you know, if you're saying that he is what he is, there is no way a person that is that evil and thinks like that would ever help somebody from another ethnicity feed their children, right? You know, feed their child, grow, build, build a family, you know, have a home. All this other, all this amazing things. You know what I mean? I, I became a young man with Philip's guidance. You know what I'm saying? I got, I've traveled the world with him. Right, and you're gonna tell you're gonna just base your idea and your and 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 negate everything this man has done over one stupid incident that happened way too far in the night when people that are professionals absolutely know that no rock star needs a microphone in his hand at two thirty in the morning at a party. <laughs> I mean, yeah, dude, right. it's just it's just it's just common sense. You know what I mean? Everybody was excited for him to be there, and another thing is that no one really. The video that was posted that went viral, that's why videos go viral, is because they are snippets of the best piece of whatever tragic, traumatic, hilarious event that happened. There was a dude that was on his balls uh, goading him for a good 15, 20 minutes. Because like I said, it was the end of the night and he was drunk and he was rambling anyways. So there was a dude talking shit all the way up until that. But no one sees that. No one brings that up. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like, dude, that was aimed at nobody but one particular dickhead that was being a dickhead. Right. Nobody yeah. cares. It was nobody cares because he's fucking famous. It was one of those things in talking with Matt, and uh, you know, he made the comment. He's like, you know, Phil has been one of those bands, one of those people who have extended the ladder down to countless bands, put so many people on over his career, has always championed in the underground. And it's like, you know, for for all this to happen, it couldn't have happened to a. a let you know a more passionate sincere person and he even made the comment about how you know and very much again echoing your same sentiments that you know his first thought was like yeah you know i kind of worried like oh how is this going to affect me but i was more worried for my friend because obviously he was not in a good place so i wanted to make sure that you know he was okay and that again just yeah. like you said Everyone wants to fucking put the dude up and, and crucify him, but no one, you know, wants to talk about him as the person. And, you know, I couldn't help but think, too, around that same time. It's like for everyone shitting on the dude right now while he's down, it's easy to do that. But it's one of those things where, OK, like, let's say this spirals out of control and he kills himself. And then it's like, oh, well, someone should have helped him. And it's like maybe the thing that the incident itself that everyone wants to criticize the person for is also the thing where that's the the point where it's like, hey, maybe that's where he needs help. And you know, as Matt was saying, I think you know Phil's been sober since then at this point. So obviously, yeah, it's, he's it's been, been, a... been sober from alcohol and he's been doing great. Yeah. Um. So kind of piggybacking off of that question and some of the things you were saying, I gotta I gotta put it out there. 
is little fucking heroes about Rob Flynn then? Because there's a line in the song where I was like, this has got to be a shot at, shot at Rob Flynn. Uh, I I would never give the satisfaction of saying that anything is about Rob Flynn. Fair enough. <laughs> but it is about it is Ouch. it is about the Rob Flynns of the world. How about oh. that? Okay, fair enough. And then uh, it is about the Rob Flynns of the world. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the actual album title, um, choosing mental illness as a virtue. That's a very interesting album title and i kind of wanted to know a little bit more about how you guys came to that title and, and what it means well uh philip is the creative mind behind all of his lyrics and and what he likes uh as far as like the ideas the overall general idea for the album but when he came up with that it was just like you choosing mental illness as a virtue is what i'm thinking and i'm like huh and he was like just think about it you know people are are willingly accepting insanity which could be you know uh in the form of an abusive relationship an abusive addiction it, it, but i really think it stems from how we uh react to, and even the super joint album caught up in the gears of application you know what i mean this is just a more extreme form of that mentality that you know people are ridiculous people are ridiculous like uh, uh this was this wasn't around when the album came out but think about i don't know if you guys have seen it, the kiki challenge or whatever Oh, yeah. People get out of their cars and they dance to that stupid little song or whatever. Yeah, and yeah, several people have yeah. already been hit by vehicles. Well, that's <laughs> that's choosing mental illness, dude. That's ridiculous. The challenge of people setting themselves on fire and stuff like that and the shout. It, you know what I mean? That's choosing mental illness. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a reason that uh, old like uh, tourist spots that were high up or that you know that there's reason that there's a reason there's barricades and stuff on bridges and stuff nowadays because people are idiots. But in back in the day, that's was Mother Nature weeding, weeding themselves out. You know, this is this is it. You know, uh, people want to stare at their phones. They feel like they have this power in their hands to be able to to be able to say something negative, positive, and maybe nothing at all. And that's it. That's that's part of the mental illness, dude. Narcissism of uh, taking selfies constantly, uh, just being a fucking troll it's dude it's 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 a sickness people have these issues and the only way we can address it on a mass scale is by writing music dude that's the only way we can do it if people want to take it and take it into the literal go for it but if they want to be vague about it you know that's you know we try not to make everything too too direct on on that note i don't think he tries because Philip doesn't like being pigeonholed, and Philip don't ever want nobody to say, "Be like, oh, this is what you wrote it about, huh?" And then he's like, "Yeah, no, he's not like he's not that kind of guy. He he brings his inspiration from a lot of different places." But for me, as a young man, when I heard choosing mental illness as a virtue, I was like, "Dude, I get it. I get it instantly. That's what I get from it." And he's like, "Yeah." And then he explains it a little bit deeper, but that's that's what I got from it. Is you know what I mean? We're we're you know we have a lot of unhealthy lifestyles out there. And with the internet, it just it just makes all that shit blossom. If you're trying to do something good, someone's gonna shit on it. That's 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 mental issues, dude. Why why do you why so much negativity? You know? Like and like you were saying about with thing with Philip, people were saying that he should kill himself and he's washed up and blah blah blah. Dude, you can go to jail for telling somebody to kill themselves. Right. If someone kills themselves and they and they bring it up in court, that that court that that happened already. They've already proven that. You can that's a felony, dude. You can go to jail for that. That's assault. It's abuse. It's just and people are more than happy to dish it out. But once you tell them anything, like that's why I, I like to comment back on people that comment on you know try to say stuff about Philip. My friends that are all over the web, they'll be like, dude, check out what this dude said, and I'll just you know. I'll be a dickhead and be, he'd be like, this guy sucks. I'd be like, not as much as your mother. You know, just like, you look, <laughs> really petty low stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just like, yeah, just like <laughs> yeah, word to your mother, give him the old Marky Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I, what I got out of the, uh, what I got out of that title too is, you know, there's a lot of things like I'm, I'm one of those people that, that struggles with, you know, daily depression and anxiety and all that shit. But one thing that I, one thing that I noticed too, what I, what I thought was cool about the album title in particular was that there's a lot of people that don't have the illnesses that they say they have. Um, or, or they have some mild form of it. Like, you know what I mean? Like how everybody gets depressed from time to time. That's a normal human emotion. Yeah. 
right? But what yeah. I see, what I see a lot of online and on Facebook and stuff like that is just people that just to the extreme. It's like literally every single day. It's like, well, I got fired from my job because I was too depressed to come in, or I got this because I was too depressed of this. And you don't understand depression. Only I understand depression. It's like everybody has their own perfectly tailored form of their own disease or their own crutch, I guess, to live off of. And um, it inhibits a lot of progress, and it creates more negativity than it. It creates more negativity than it than it raises awareness. Like everybody runs it under the banner of "we're just raising awareness of this." Da 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 da. It's like, well, people are already aware that people have mental illnesses, and you know, we do try to try to fix those on a personal level. But just getting online and making a whole bunch of statements about, you know, I have this, I have that, and you're wearing your you're wearing your illness as more or less a badge of honor. You know, more so yeah. than, you know, actually admitting that there's a problem and trying to fix it. It's more of just like a, this is just the way I am. And that's just, that's the way I yeah. interpreted the lyrics on this album kind of as on a whole is that like, you know, you can, you can move forward instead of just choosing a mental illness that you have and, and using that as, as your whole identity. I don't know if I'm far yeah. off on that well, or not, but that's just no, my... no, no, no. He, he, well, like he says, like he says on the he, he, on the album, I swear, if I could shake it off, I would, but I embrace it, yeah. and that's that's the thing, man. Is you have to embrace the person you are. We're all individuals. I'm a I'm a firm believer that what might make somebody a hundred percent healthy might kill the next person. Uh, we're just extremely unique. Well, we're human. That's it, dude. We're human, and like you said, we do. We we acknowledge there is awareness for many many issues. I mean, dude, the suicide prevention hotline has been around for I don't know how long, but yeah, has long it time. really decreased numbers? I'm not sure. I've never really looked into it. You know what I mean? Has it helped and saved a lot of people? I'm sure it has, and that's awesome because that's an that's an, a strong strong emotion to overcome, and it's like we know that people are sick. We know that people have problems, but we refuse to take care of them. That's just it. We refuse to take care of them. We refuse to acknowledge our own shortcomings. And and how do you how do you fight a battle that no one wants to fight? You know what I mean? But and especially now that we got our phones and and social media, we can just bitch and bitch and bitch and bitch about it. Right, because being upset about something or or there being a big issue is much more entertaining than the reality of fixing an issue. You know what I mean? It's more interesting to people to have a problem than it is to just be okay. You know? Yeah. And um and I think that's yeah. that's part of the disease, you know, that's that's talked about yeah. on the album is just that there's, you know, there there's too much negativity almost in the name of entertainment. Yeah, I mean dude, like I said, you know, people want to be nasty and people want to say like uh, okay, for an example, take like the Avengers movies, right? Yeah. These are superhero movies, dude. These are universal movies designed to entertain. And you can go through the comments, and I promise you, you can find some of the most horrid, horrendous stuff uh, being said about the characters, the actors, directors. I mean, and dude, these little uh, people that aren't in, in the industry, that aren't in the music industry, uh, I, I'm going to let the cat out of the bag on this one. I like to call them normies. <laughs> yeah. Because. Trademark. Yeah, you guys aren't normies. You guys know what's up. You guys know. You guys know that there's a chance that meeting your hero, it's going to be weird because you guys do media. You guys do interviews and stuff like that. So you have to say, I mean, I'm sure you guys are professional and you're like, hey, by the way, this is who I work for. This is what I do but I'm not on duty tonight. Don't worry. Nothing I say, nothing you say, like, this is me and you, bro. We're broing out. This right. isn't an interview. This is hanging out. Right. I'm here to enjoy the show. Right. We appreciate stuff like that because there are some people out there that would like to ride a coattail, get up there, and just be like, oh, yeah, this is me. And then you, you find out later, oh, that dude works for so-and-so magazine. And then they just they tailor an entire interview to a conversation that you might have had that was in private. Not saying right. that that's happened. Oh, actually, it did happen to me. It did happen to me. So, <laughs> oh. uh, and and that's that's just like people want their five minutes of fame. There, it's not even fifteen minutes anymore, dude. It's five minutes, dude. It's it's absolutely five minutes of fame, and that's where people's heads are at, dude. That's that sickness. People want attention that 
don't need that kind of attention. Like seek it somewhere else. Go, go to the gym, go for a jog, go for a swim, <laughs> do something, get a puppy. Something <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Try to be productive to and be creative. Yeah, yeah. Instead of taking stuff away. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's another thing about the quote unquote normies is that talent doesn't stop at playing music or being athletic. Uh, it's creativity. It's what you do just because you're not making money at your creative side. You know what I mean? Whether it be woodworking or painting or something like that, just because you're not selling your stuff doesn't mean you're not an artist. I really think that everybody has the potential to be greater than what they are because dude, I'm just a kid from Fort Worth, dude. I'm jamming with one of the, uh, I'm jamming with a living legend. There's like, like there's no beating around the bush. My guy, his vocals, his stories, his impact that he's made on the earth will live forever and no one can ever take that away. And I have the opportunity to try and do that same thing and make that same impact with him. You, no one's ever going to take that. I fucking, I, you, you, I would love to see you try, <laughs> but it makes it kind of sad. And it, people don't realize the same potential that they have within themselves. It doesn't mean you got to go out and play in front of 25,000 people. It just means you got to be a better person. Just be you. Express yourself in the way that you need it, the way you need to, but in a healthy manner. People don't even want to take the time to do that. That's not my business. I'm not here to get uh, political or preaching. I'm here to whip that ass. But if you ask me, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, yeah, we could all be a little bit of a better person and we could all, you know, take some advice from the old man and just, you know, embrace it. Embrace who you are. Embrace what you are. Be better for it. Was that too deep? No, I was, no, just... I was thinking about my own history, and you know, like I played, I played music for a while. I sang in a band and all that, but like it was, uh, you know, after a while, I got too old, and I had bills and a house and a family, and I remember thinking, oh man, you know, that's my shot. I, I had my, I had that shot back then, and now I'm too old to do it, and all this stuff. And then literally, it, you know, with with podcasting and and music journalism and stuff, it's one of those like, no man, I can actually still be actively involved. You know, yeah, but absolutely. It just may not be in the way that I envisioned it originally. And now, you know, now we're, you know, now we're on here talking to, you, talking to all kinds of people yeah, that dude. I thought we'd talk to, you know. And this is healthy and creative, dude. You, you know, you get some stuff off your chest. You get to meet somebody new. You get to uh, talk about an album. And it's it's a way healthier outlet than you trying to grind your gears and be like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to make it, babe. I'm going to make it. We're going to make it. And, you know, putting a second mortgage on your house and, you know, being right. stressed out about what you're going to do. You know what I mean? You, you've come full circle and you've embraced, you've embraced it. Congratulations, my friend, both of you gentlemen. Why? Thank you. <laughs> but we need that, man. We need more open-minded people and people that are willing to do that. We, we, we try. And uh, John, did you have something? Sorry, man. I kept no, cutting no, you off. I, no, it was just, <laughs> I, I was going to say, I think this is a, uh, both those sentiments, uh, the one right before Dan was kind of just talking about what he just said and uh, what you just said, Joey, I think that's I think that's really as great of a place as we can end on uh, without rehashing a lot of <laughs> the same things. Um, so you guys are getting ready to start your tour on September 6th, which I believe is this upcoming Monday after the holiday uh, in New Orleans. The tour is with King Parrot, and it ends September 30th in, is it Fayetteville? Is that how you say it? Uh, your guess is as good as mine, brother. Okay. And, uh, what I'm looking forward to the most, and one of the reasons I wanted to have you on, uh, ahead of time is you have Berserker Fest, uh, coming up here in Detroit, uh, on September 28th. Uh, you guys are headlining Berserker Fest. Uh, it is going to be a full of house core love between King Parrot, you guys, and, uh, my good friends in Child Bites. A lot of great bands on the bill. Brian Posehn is hosting. Hoping to make it out and maybe uh, do some more in-person chats with some of you guys again. Um, but looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, we always like to uh, have the, the guest uh, play a song to end the episode out to. It uh, doesn't have to be a song of your own, but would you like us to play it out to and maybe a little story as to why you chose that song? Uh, do I do I do like a uh, uh, my name and band and stuff? Yeah, the, the whole thing. Kind of wrap it up and work yeah, people I'll find call, it. Yeah, the whole thing? Yeah. All right, uh, it's... Uh, this is Blue from Philip H. S. Somo and the Illegals, and you're listening to Kiss from a Rose by Seal. You know what's funny? I just saw that uh, the vinyl for the, the Batman Forever soundtrack is out, but it's like 30 bucks. And someone goes, you know, All right. this movie sucked, but I don't know if it's worth $30 just for the Seal song. So it's funny you said that. 
Hey, well, I just heard Dude. a black metal band cover that song recently. No way. Yeah, no yeah. way. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! Full disclosure, I've been trying to sing lately, and I, I, I on a on a goof, my roommate is a bartender. He showed up at the house at like one thirty two in the morning. He was already tipsy. He's like, "Dude, you want to sing?" I was like, "Yeah, bro." He was like, "Well, what do you want to sing?" I was like, "Dude, let's do Seal." He's like, "Dude, that's gonna be hard." I was like, "I got it." I blew out my voice because <laughs> I'm not a singer. I've never really sang. Yeah, dude, I yeah. blew out my voice, baby. Dude, it's hard. That's all right. It looks like someone Seal's blew out it. Seal's face. So, we're good. <laughs> dude, that was a, that was a joke. But if you want me to do a real one, I will. But uh, that, that's that's, a, that's up to you one. if you want if you want to do it. I I mean I don't mind that song. I haven't heard it in probably ten years, but <laughs> <laughs> fuck it, play it. Let all it right, run. Let's do that. Let it roll. All right, and then play an illegal song after if you can. Which one would you like us to play? The, the, the ignorant point. It'd be, be a very good dynamic. <laughs> it'll well, it'll man, showcase guys, all it'll uh, showcase all your vocal talents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm going for. I'm going for a cross between uh, Philip on the new uh, Choosing Mental Illness album and Seal. All right. <laughs> try, try. I want to be America's sweetheart. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you again for taking the time, and uh, sorry to hear about your your van troubles. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll catch you uh, in Detroit at Berserker Fest, and maybe Dan will be able to catch a date on the tour as well. And that was our chat with Joey Blue Gonzalez, drummer for Philip H. and Selmo and the Illegals. I thoroughly enjoy that chat personally. It was a good chat, man. Uh, really eye opening uh, for me on a few things. Uh, it was kind of nice to get something that was really as close to the horse's mouth as you could get on the uh on the dime bash event you know and uh you know to, to get that perspective and it's like no dude you saw three seconds of something and you've made your entire judgment on a person based on that and you really weren't there <laughs> and can't really uh can't can't really notice that like phil is you know his actions speak very differently than what you know maybe those words were meant to portray yeah, I mean, I think that's basically the society we live in now is everyone's so quick to judge something without doing any kind of research, any kind of putting themselves into a different perspective for even a split second because it's easy just to hop on the bandwagon and follow the trend of like, oh, well, this this is this is bad, so therefore, here we go. I mean, what like he said, what's the more clickbait thing going to be? The thing right. that, that actually happened or the thing that you see and the perception of what you think you see. Well, and I, I bring this up a lot, and uh, I always use the Michael Jackson example as 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 the best example of of that behavior, where Michael Jackson was never officially charged with doing or or found guilty of doing anything uh, unscrupulous with with small children. Mm -hmm. However, the public perception of Michael Jackson is that he was a pedophile. Right, and nobody shakes that even though you know in a court of law multiple times he's been pr it's been proven that no no wrongdoing was was found or discovered right but it's much more entertaining to believe that he's a child molester than it is to believe that oh he's just a weird dude that you know raised a little bit of a suspicion due to his behavior but nothing's been proven conclusively well nobody wants that story that's not a story you can run right you know, so you run with the, you know, oh, well, he probably just paid people off. I mean, just look at him, you know. And like I said, I don't, I don't, I didn't know the guy personally at all, so I really couldn't say one way or the other. But that's kind of the whole point, right? Because if I don't know him, I would say most people didn't know him, and most people couldn't say objectively whether he did it or didn't. The only exception, I think, to that rule might be like an O.J. Simpson, you know, <laughs> like, but. The, the interesting thing about this, that whole thing to me, too, and is the the and society as a whole i mean we kind of talked about it a couple of weeks ago with the whole james gunn thing but the fact that people start redigging through shit trying to find completely different meanings or whatever and the thing that was weird to me about it is you look at you know phil's lyrics you know going back to pantera i mean five minutes alone great example look at those lyrics and it's like but then people would go back and be like, oh, well, he was doing it in this video. And, oh, they used, you know, the, the rebel flag and all this kind of shit. And it's just like, it's like, you know, I'm sure if anyone were to go back through any of our histories and anything we've said or done or whatever, it's like, I'm sure you're going to find things that weren't favorable actions or things that we have done. But you know what? That doesn't mean that's that's who we are. Or we can't grow or learn. But beyond all that, it's it's still just crazy how sensationalized things become as a result of 
clickbaity type stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I know it was really hard too. Um, you know, in my interview with Matt, I brought it up and in my interview, obviously with or the interview with Joey, you know, talking about the event, but it's like, to me, it was very interesting to kind of not, I think I said it best in the interview with Matt, where it's like, there's the obvious impact, like the, the, the land, like where the thing happened, but it's the ripple effect and the and the things happening beyond where the impact zone is that I'm more interested in because it's like that's the thing people don't think about. You're you're shitting on a dude and you like you know Joey was saying people were threatening that they wanted Phil to kill himself, and it's like okay so like how does that affect you as his bandmate? How does that affect Matt as someone on his label and as a friend of his? Like those are the kind of things I'm more interested in because that's the thing you don't hear about because it's not the thing that's going to drive you know people go to websites right yeah and i mean that's that's really extreme too like the people telling him to kill himself i mean i criticized the fuck out of the dude oh you know a while back but like i mean that to to go to that extreme you know to say that somebody should kill themselves or you know and then, then everybody like I, you know like we talked about in the interview people are just so hyped up on the fucking entertainment value of the controversy that it stays relevant so much longer than it really needs to. I mean, we're kind of talking know? about it a, over a year later. And everybody just wants to appear smarter than everyone else. So that's why they throw those types of comments out there. Um, these really huge claims about somebody's personality or their character. And it's usually somebody they don't even know. And I'll get off that soapbox. So I could talk about this shit for hours. But <laughs> Well, I think uh, in light of our chat being a little bit of a longer one, which, uh, you know, we've we've had a couple now that are a little bit longer lately. I know those are your favorites. Absolutely. But uh, I like to try to keep be a little more mindful of people's time. So, uh, you know, people didn't come here to hear us blab, I guess. Not yet, anyway. But, uh, yeah. One day. One day. Um, so, yeah, you can catch uh, Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals out on tour with King Parrot. The tour, again, starts September 6th in New Orleans and ends in Arizona on September 30th. Uh, love that quick little pun if anyone caught it in the interview. And uh, you can catch them again at Berserker Fest on September 28th at the Crowfoot Ballroom in Pontiac, Michigan. Head to BerserkerDetroit.com for all your ticket information. Some great bands, Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals, are headlining Negative Approach, Child Bite, The Armed, uh... Oozing Wound, I think maybe that's a band Dan's up or into, I believe. I thought you saw you post something about them. Yes. Uh, Battle yeah. Cross again, King Parrot, Home Wrecker, great stuff again. If you're into underground heavy metal, all kinds of different sub genres of metal and, and loud aggressive music, uh, Berserker Fest is where you want to be. Hosted by probably the most metal comedian ever in Brian Posehn, and uh, yeah, so go to Berserker. Detroit.com. Again, get your tickets, all your information. Uh, that is September 28th. Uh, if you would like to keep up with uh, the band, you can find Philip Illegals on Facebook. Instagram is Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals, all one word. Type it in. And uh, you can follow our show sponsor, The Bean Bastard, at TheBeanBastard.com. Facebook and Instagram are The Bean Bastard. Um, Nick has been doing some uh, renovations on his uh, coffee mobile. I don't think it has a name yet. Uh, I think we're going to try to get him on here pretty soon to talk about all things coffee. And if you would like to keep up with our show partner, Moshpit Nation can be found on moshpitnation.com. Facebook is Moshpit Nation West Capital MI. Instagram and Twitter are simply Moshpit Nation. And Dan, where can the people find and follow you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Discuss Metal Dan. You can uh, find my other podcast, discography discussion at www.discussmetal.com and you can send me an email if you'd like at discussmetaldan at gmail.com you can keep up with all things the podcast on facebook instagram and youtube at johnson title podcast tweet at us at johnson title pod email us at johnson title pod at gmail.com and go to our website johnson title pod.com and you can also throw us some monetary support at patreon we have an episode up there we'll be recording another one here pretty soon uh head over to patreon.com slash johnson title podcast and we're going to end this episode as we always do with a song and as you heard joey pick he wanted us to end it to kiss from a rose by seal and uh yeah we will uh talk to you guys next time